<laughs> and especially for the women, especially for the women, they give you the police number. If your husband is like this, you have to call. <laughs> That's correct, yes. So, Victor and I we met 18 years ago when we first arrived. That's a long Belgium. time ago, eh? It's a long time ago, yes. So, and, when you arrived and, here... And your daughter has the name Allison, so my son, Allison. That's correct. Our children, they have the same age as well. Yeah. It was a coincidence. It was a big yeah. coincidence. Yeah. So I don't know uh, uh, that, that you mean. if you know, like when you arrive in Belgium, you have to take some courses in order to integrate the culture, not only the language, but you have to know about the country and all these things. They have that in the UK as well? No, no, unfortunately. Only, only when you apply for the British citizenship. So I think you should have, I think the Belgian is a good example. Yeah, if you don't have that for Belgium, you can never have citizenship here. So when you come in the beginning, it's always good that you do that. They have some procedures. You have to do at least a minimum of the language, the 1.1 1. Yeah. 1 level. Yeah. Uh, you have to do integration, which I met Simone there. Then there's another one called the Imbu Gray. You also go and uh, other, other things to learn about the political setting, all those things, to voting rights, all those type of things. Then you have those three papers that qualify you after maybe when the, the number of time you have to stay in Belgium before asking for your nationality, when you are going, then these three documents have to qualify you for that. Uh, How nice. in, the, in the United States, they take you to McDonald's, Walmart, and Trump Tower. <laughs> the Trump Tower. <laughs> That's how you get integrated <laughs> into the United States. <laughs> but Bruce, it was, Bruce the, you are. It, 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 was, it was quite easy because they paid everything for us. We were paid for attending that course. So if I correct. was to attend the course, we were being paid for attending the course. So it was mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. So we have. Um, one person trying to come in right now, and there's another one coming at 9.15, she told us. Um, so I think we can start any time. I've already started the recording. I don't want to miss anything. You guys are already talking about how you guys met and everything else. Yeah. Uh, Victor, where are you from? So today I'll be a main guest, and I'm uh, prepared to answer the every question, especially those that concern the Cameroon and the Belgium where I live. So you can have a taste of both the culture and how far we have gone and how we are coping with a new system here. Because when you migrate from somewhere to here, there's always difficulties. And sometimes you look back home, you see the good, the bad, the ugly. Then you start to think what is good, what is bad, which one is good. So everywhere, home, there's advantages. Here, there are, advantage, there are disadvantages everywhere. Yes. So today we're going to be sharing that together. So, I'm uh, going to introduce myself again. I I made a video. I don't know if Simone shared the video uh, that I already made introduced that I'm from Cameroon. I think a lot of you know Cameroon based on the football history of Africa. Then they have always been outstanding. And they made some history in the day of the 90s. And today we still remember for that. Like When you talk about Cameroon, you have also great players like Samuel Eto, Roger Mila. These are players that have been world-class players. So I'm, uh, I'm grateful that I'm part of that nation. And the, uh, if you are in Brazil, don't forget, Cameroon is always a problem to Brazil each time we meet at football level. <laughs> Victor, I was, Victor, I was just going to say, in the last World Cup, we played Cameroon. Cameroon. And we won. Yes. No, Brazil won. No. The only... People that Brazil lost to was to Cameroon. Was and we, oh, I have to check this. I have to check online. And, and we went out there. Eh? We Brazil <laughs> is the only team that Cameroon won against, and we lost. And we have to go out in the first round, but we uh, won Brazil before going out. <laughs> well, winning against Brazil is like winning the World Cup. What, it, was, yeah, it, was, it was in the World Cup. It, it was, was the, no, it was a World Cup. First, first round. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You won 1-0, December yeah. 2nd. That's right. I well, no. <laughs> Wait a minute. It's confusing. 
because it's showing where No. Hello, hello, Lujadio, and hello, Lujmila. Hello, hello, everyone. Rodrigo, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for Rogério. Yeah, where's Rogério? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Carlos is going to stay uh, Ringo Starr today. Yes. He's, he's got his. Why, why I keep needle. on with my introduction? I said I'm already I'm from Cameroon, from the English part of Cameroon because Cameroon has two sections. They have two countries that came together. Mm -hmm. uh, one speaks French and the other part speaks English. So I'm oh, from wow. the English part. Yeah. So Cameroon was colonized by the British and the French. Before mm -hmm. it was colonized by Germany. After Second World War, mm -hmm. it was handed over to France and to the British. So the British separated the two countries and ruled them as the French colony and the British colony. So in 1960, uh, the, 1960, the French colony had their independence. And in 1961, the British colony had their independence by joining with the French colony to make one country through a plebiscite. So they became now, the official language became French and English. And that's how oh, we found ourselves. Oh, both languages, huh? Both languages, French and English. Yeah. Yes, French and English. Mm. Uh, but um, it's like the, in Belgium, we have the Dutch and the French. But I'm from the English part. But mm. apart from speaking English and French, Cameroon have 248 different languages. <laughs> wow. Well, that sounds like an easy country to live in. It's an easy country to live in because once you can express yourself in English and French, you are good to go. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, yeah. So yes. the, what what are what are the the most uh, uh, dialects that well known in Cameroon? Oh, there are no special dialects that are well known in Cameroon. Uh, they are based on tribal links. Mm -hmm. You understand? For example, if you if they are, every city has their own language. And I can assure you, this language is different from anything you ever gonna hear. So you can stay in all the cities, you, you speak language and every language is unique, is different. Okay. But you have some languages that you can be familiar with in Cameroon, like the Creole, which is a broken pidgin language. They call it pidgin language. Oh. It's a street language. It was created uh, by the British, because when they first came to Cameroon, um, the country like Cameroon, Nigeria, and Ghana, who still alone that speak those broken English. So since the people were not all that, they could not read and write English, and it was difficult to train them. So that language was easy to be used among them. So they were trained with that language to make, to make working with them easy. So after the British, that language has remained as a trademark, but it is not official. But it is well spoken. There are TV stations that are broadcasted in that language. So if you speak that language also, you are very good to go. Mm. They are dominant because the whole English region and part of the French region, everybody understands that language very well. It's very different from the English, although English words are used, but they are like cut and place. You understand? Cut and place. And they, you also have the language in Jamaica. I'm part of those Latin America that speak English. Oh, then, interesting. Yes, then you have some, uh, you have the Hausa. Hausa is the Muslim, it's Islamic language. It's is the because we also have the northern part of Cameroon is mostly Muslim. The central have Muslim dotted and they have the Hausa, they have the Fulani, the Fube. These are all Islamic cultural tribes or cultural people and but they are almost half of the country is made of this group and they are mostly found in the north and they are dotted around the central and south and west so they speak hausa and they also speak, speak the fulani so this language is dominant among this tribe so if you want to stay in the north and you understand some hausa which is always spoken in part of nigeria and part of the the, the west african and north african 
So you are also good to go because yeah. they have the same culture, because they migrated from the same area. So in Cameroon, we have a lot of migration groups. You have the Bantus, the Semi-Bantus, the Fulani. So we have a lot of mi different migration groups that migrated in, the, in those days because of wars that were rampant. So they found themselves in the Cameroons. And today they form different, different tribes, different culture and uh, different languages and so but these local languages are not official so you are not obliged to speak any but if you want to live within the community <laughs> it's going to do a lot of good because most of the community they speak their dialect and yeah. it's a way of transferring that dialect from one generation to another like i i speak about five different dialects totally different totally different from each other yeah mm. what about yoruba Yoruba is a Nigerian language. It's not found in Cameroon, but there are tribes that are dotted that you can find it. But it's a very big and popular language in Nigeria, which most of the central east of Nigeria they speak. But Cameroon is is bordered by Nigeria also, but mostly from the north and the Igbos, which they speak the Igbo, but we don't speak that. And Creole, Creole is very similar to Portuguese. Yeah, the Creole that we speak is a pidgin. That I was saying, it is spoken in Nigeria, Cameroon, Nigeria, Ghana, and all those uh, English-speaking countries in Africa. You have also Jamaica, Haiti. They also speak that language. It's a yeah. we call it broken English. Yeah, yeah. But it's a street language. It's a street language in, in the real sense, and it's mostly spoken by people who are not educated, who cannot read or write. So that's a language of expression. Yeah. Because you bear with me that. English was introduced to Cameroonians less than um, 80 years ago. You understand? So you will bear with me that not everybody can make it a home language because it is the language of education. All institution of education in Cameroon is taught in English and in French. And you will bear with me that there are a lot of older generation that never had the opportunity to learn the English so that they can use it like that. So that broken language remains their language of communication, which is fine, which nearly everybody also understands. It's like a national language, but it is not official. I used to have a contact uh, um, with the Jamaican language when I was working on a cruise line ship. So there was yeah. lots of Jamaican and they used to tell us bad words. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so, for me, if a Jamaican speaks here, I can identify that this is a Jamaican. If a Nigerian speaks, I can also identify that this is a Nigerian. But we will speak yeah. the same thing. But a yeah. little way of expression that changes. Yeah. And yeah. you know, the language becomes, there are some expressions that are tied to their culture. That becomes their identity. That means if you say a word in Nigeria, I can know that this person is Nigerian based on their culture and based on the use of things, the way they, they pronounce certain things. You will know that the camera may pronounce it this way, they pronounce this way. The same way the Dutch in Belgium and that in the Netherlands, you can easily identify who is who. But this is the same thing. So that's yeah, how the trio is also. I find I find fascinating this this culture of the languages and the dialects and everything. Yes, Two hundred and fifty eight different languages, all different. I'll give you an example. There's a big Cameroon community here in Belgium. The like in Hasse, where I live, there are more than fifty Cameroonians there. Out of these fifty, there is nobody that speaks the same dialect with me. <laughs> so you can imagine. In the whole of Belgium, there are only three people that speak the same tribal language with me. So you it means to, if, you get together in a bar have, sometime and talk, huh? Yeah, but they come from different uh, cultural backgrounds. I come from different cultural backgrounds, but we are all Cameroonians. They speak their own dialect. I speak mine, but we, we are not much. They are also not much. Maybe they also have two, three people. So you see, because of the numerous languages, dialect, is difficult. You can be many here, but to have that person that speaks the same dialect with you is a bless. It's something very difficult. Yeah, it's 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 interesting, Victor, because I mean, in the in the in the dialect dialect that translates yeah. 
so much about your culture, about your people, about your uh, heritage, about your uh, past growing up as a kid and, and that, that connection. It's a strong feeling. But with the time, with the standard, standardization, I don't know if that's the right word, uh, with the languages and etc. lots of dialects, it's, it's kind of being, being lost. Yes, a lot is being lost today because the why when I was growing up, uh, there were two things that you could you could do in our home. Our parents oblige us. Either you speak good English or you speak the dialect. So I since I could not speak good English, I chose the dialect. <laughs> so it was more easy. I was in the village with my grandmother. Then most of the time I would listen to English on CNN and in school because the, the English was a language taught in school. But at home, we speak pidgin, dialect. So now the pidgin language was eating up the dialect. So our father had to say he doesn't want pidgin at home. It's either the dialect or the English, the good English. So I was forced to also learn the dialect. Then I now started listening to CNN, trying to upgrade my English, you know, to meet up because in school, if you, you, are, you can, a child can fail because he lacks the basic knowledge as a child grew in the village where your language of communication is dialect. Then you are going to school in English. It doesn't come easy. Uh, Victor, if we go to Cameroon to visit Cameroon, are we going to be okay with English? Walking down the street, asking for information? You'll be very, very okay. You do not have a problem, but the, I, will, I will say Cameroon are two countries that come together. One area is English, one is French. If you are in the English region, you will not have any situation, any problem whatsoever having in communication. But if you are in the French uh, area, the, you will have a little bit of difficulties, but it doesn't go far because most of the places you will visit are always people who speak good English there to help you. Right. So it's not a problem. Uh, Victor? Yeah. Can you tell them um, it was difficult for you? Your line is breaking. No, no, she's speaking. She's speaking in a different dialect. <laughs> ah. Yeah, repeat, Simone, no. please. Yeah. Okay, Victor, I was wondering if you can tell them, for you having English as almost your mother tongue, how easy or how difficult it was for you to learn that when you first arrived in Belgium? You, you know, having English as a mother tongue or a language of instruction, education that I had all my life, then when I came to Belgium, I have to start learning Dutch. It was not easy. And uh, believe me, especially when you are learning another language at OH, it doesn't come easy. As a kid, it's very easy for children to understand and master new languages. But when you are older than an adult, it does not come easy because one, you, you cannot focus only on the language. You are focusing to make a living. You are focusing to get a job. You are focused, and everything became difficult. You go to, to any place to look for a job. They speak the language. You are home translating. You want to go to school and make a course. It's in the dialect. You are first going to do this. So in every step you take, you are losing at least one, at least one year of your life in trying to master the English. If you come to Belgium, New, you need only one to two years to get integrated, get to the, or study the language and get a job. And when you have a job at that time, you cannot have a job of what you want because your language is still low. So it takes about 10 years for you to mature in the language and start speaking the language in such a way that you can have a job or study something that you actually would love to do. So in the first few years, you, you are going to just be battling with a language issue at all level of education, all level of, of studies, all level of work, it doesn't come easy. But I was lucky. I took my first one year. I studied the language. I was doing mm -hmm. studying and working at, at my workplace. I was able to improve much faster. So 
when I, then soon I found myself that it was becoming easy. Then sometimes you make mistakes, they laugh, but they say it is in is by your mistakes that you grow. So sometimes you keep pushing, struggling, making your mistake. When they laugh, at the end of the day, they give you the correction and you take home. <laughs> oh, but Vandalay has a question. So, Victor, tell us about um, the, the political scene, the political strife that's going on in Cameroon and how that was growing up, dealing with that. Okay. As I early told you, people, that Cameroon are two countries that came together. And because two countries that came together, they came with different cultural backgrounds. And the English part of Cameroon formed just one third of the country. They are about, Cameroon has a population of about 30 million. And the English population is about 8 million. So the French make up about 20 million. And that's the genesis of the problem. So when they came together, there was a contract that was signed called the plebiscite, which defined their cohabitation. So over the process, they discovered the English area was too rich. The discovery of oil, the discovery of natural resources, gold, diamond. Now the problem started. So they see that, that they had their own right to rule their own area, but was in a federal system. So they discovered they were becoming too powerful and with the riches, they couldn't control them. So with the backing of the French and the, the Francophone, they suppressed, they suppressed the English part of the Cameroon and installed a unitary system, which killed a lot of the institution that they were helping them to develop because they were developing faster mm -hmm. than the French mm -hmm. section. And the mm -hmm. French section thought that if they, the English section was to grow mm -hmm. faster, their own people will revolt at one point. Simona, are you saying something? Because I'm not getting you. No, she's talking to Philip. Okay. So the English section now became defranchised. They, they felt manipulated. They, they felt that they were being assimilated. So they started killing the English institution and their way of culture and forcing the French culture upon them. So they started revolting in the 90s. And in 2016, it took a different turn when they started employing English teachers, to, uh, French teachers to teach in the English region and employ French soldiers, French police to be enforcing the law in the English uh, region that the people could not understand. So the people saw it as a direct assimilation and they took to the street. They used the military to cure it, but later the people took up arms and said they want their total separation and independence from the French system that they don't, they don't want to be part of it. So that has been the problem of Cameroon since 2016. Till now, as we are speaking, it's not getting better and it shows that maybe in the future, the country is likely to fall apart mm -hmm. because there is no solution. And uh, we, are having, we are having a dictator that has been ruling Cameroon since 1982. Almost, almost my age mate <laughs> when he came to power till now, and he has not been doing anything good. So he's ruling, ruling with a rock and iron. We know all how he behave, you know, and he's supported by the French government and many other countries that they are using him as a tool of exploitation. So it has not been a good idea. This next year there will be election. We don't know the outcome. He wants to seek for another eight term. He's almost 100 years <laughs> old. So we don't know how he intends to do it, but that's how that's where we found ourselves. It's a Cameroon is a full dictatorship. There's no freedom of speech. You can be in prison when they like. One mistake is enough to put you in prison for your whole life. So in Cameroon, when you visit Cameroon, what you say and what you do, you have to be careful because it's a totalitarian system of government. There is no freedom of speech, corruption, whatever thing happens, bribe bribery away, move on. <laughs> wow. So uh, do you visit Cameroon sometimes? I'm sure you have family there, cousins, uncles, aunts. Yes, I do. I do visit Cameroon every year. Uh, this year, I will be going there in November. I was there last year. So I do, but I when I'm there, I'm very, very careful what I say, 
there are there are spies everywhere. Even in the bar, when you are saying something, you be careful. And then it's not just that. Since the system has been coming corrupt, there it has there's lawlessness, and and there are now gangs that profit from the lawlessness to set scores with people. For example, you can be there doing something. The people will just say, "Yeah, you spoke against the president. Uh, you are you are you are." you want to overthrow the government and then you look for something and put on your head to, to extort you you know now you have to buy your way out so it's a very complicated system but we hope uh with time it's gonna change because the president is 100 years old we are praying for him to die but he says he's not dying <laughs> <laughs> we are we have been fasting each time they will come and lie that he's dead. People will go drinking the bar, celebrating. Soon you see him come out again. They say this man is not dying. <laughs> About 20 years ago, there was rumor that he's dead. Every people went to the street to celebrate. <laughs> At the, by the end of the day, he appeared on TV and said he has 20 years more to live. And on the 9th of June, is making him that 20 years that he's promised. Wow. So your life in uh, Belgium now, Victor, um, what do you do? What kind of work do you do? I live in Belgium. Uh, I'm a truck driver. I'm a trailer driver. I drive the, the big trucks, mm. uh, the heavy duty trucks. Only, so, in, only in Belgium or across Europe? I, I can't drive across Europe, but for now, I before I used to drive across Europe, I used to drive to Italy, to Germany, uh, to Holland. I used to drive steadily in Holland, doing between Belgium, Utrecht, Hanover, Nijmegen. I used to do all those areas. I used to go to Hamburg. I used to go to Poland, to Switzerland, wow. to Italy. I travel all everywhere, but it was stressful. Then I discovered that me driving at home in Belgium and coming home the same day, maybe the difference in earning was about 500 euros. So I discovered even the 500 euros that I make more, I spend it on food. <laughs> so to me, it didn't make sense. So mm -hmm. I decided to drive just local. So I, end up, I drive in the morning, end of the day, I'm at home. Or in the nice. night, by daybreak, I'm at home. And you have children? Right. Yes. I have... Uh, I have two children. Mm -hmm. uh, the oldest is twenty is twenty one years going. In two mm -hmm. months, she's twenty one years. She lived with me. I had her when I was in school in Cameroon in those days. When I was in high school, so I have she grew up with me. So I took care of her single handedly. She she's almost a nurse. She's a nurse already. She works and she's doing very well. That's the only achievement I can claim of because to have a child in 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 Europe and he grow to listen to you as a father and be successful, you have to pray for that. It's a <laughs> prayer point. <laughs> yeah. You can have a daughter, especially a girl's children. You can only describe that she's married, you see on the TV or on Facebook, like everybody else. <laughs> mm. But I'm happy that this one, she listened and she's doing her best. She still stay with me at home. She's still calm. Then I also have another son that Simone knows very well. He's 15 years, almost, I think 15 years. 2008 now. It's almost so, 16. So you're married to a lady from Belgium? I was married to a lady from Belgium, but in 2007, we divorced in 2012. Oh, okay. But I'm married again uh, from a lady from Cameroon. And uh, she'll be here in, in, by, by by Tuesday. Oh, <laughs> wow, nice. Yes, but it's an old, uh, it's a girlfriend I know her for long, so, but we got married, she'll be coming to Belgium on Tuesday. So, so she's, oh. she's coming to Belgium for the first time? For the first time. Ooh, lots of integration. Oh, wow. Two years of integration. Yes. <laughs> she'll have to go there and get the police number. <laughs> Integration is where we all, the men here call the integration call where your wife is empowered. <laughs> oh. Vitor. That way they, they tell your wife, if your husband is doing this, it's not good. You have to throw him out. If he's doing that, you have to call the police number. 
Not but it's okay. Uh, uh, Victor, I'm, 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 I'm interested to know about the food. How's the food in Cameroon? Uh, for the food, I can assure you that Cameroon is called African miniature. What does that mean? It means that whatever thing you found in Africa is found in Cameroon. Whatever animal that exists in Africa is also in Cameroon. Whatever mm. bird or food or plant that is in Africa, you can find you can find the same thing in Cameroon. So it is called African miniature. So whatever food you eat in Africa, know that you can also eat it in Cameroon. Wow. Nice. But they have their local ditches based on the area where you come from, based on your cultural background. Like me, we have what they call the fufu corn. Is made, that's my own dear, uh, local food from where I come from. It's made from corn, it's corn flour, mm -hmm. maize. It's corn flour and uh, vegetables. Then there's this fish, the, the smoked fish that you prepare and you eat together. Then you have also, I will name you a lot of the main local dishes. Not the European, you have the European dishes that are also there, or the Western dishes, let me put it like that. The Western dishes that anybody can eat, like the, the fried, the chicken, the baked chicken, all those <laughs> ones, spaghetti, and they are always going to be there for people. But you have main local dishes. If you come to come, you will eat the fufu and aero. The aero is a local vegetable that is very difficult to get. It is made with Fufu that is from cassava. Mm, cassava. Yeah, you ferment the cassava, keep it, remove it, then it becomes somewhere like that. Then you use it to make the fufu. Then you can eat with the arrow. So they call it fufu and arrow. That's the, the first uh, dish that you want to eat. Then you have the achu. Achu and yellow soup. Yellow soup is a sauce, a sauce that is made from palm oil and bicarbonate from the core it become the core it limestone from limestone so when you take the 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 the, the palm oil then you put the craft, is that? if you take the palm oil and then you put that limestone inside it's gonna turn yellow then they have some spices that they put inside then they will take the the cocoa yam you know the cocoa yam so they will beat the cocoa yam or they will grind the cocoa yam in the machine until it is like, 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 it is like, uh, it is soft, very soft that you can take with your finger. So you, you, you put the center, you make the center to be, to be hollow. Then you pour that soup inside with meat, all those things. Then you begin to take a lot and put inside and then you eat. It's very, very popular there. Wow, then, it seems uh, it's it seems delicious. If I had yeah, the opportunity to go to I could I could share with you, then you will see it. <laughs> <laughs> is there is there a on the on the on Google because you eat yes. your hands. So it's yes. okay on Google, please. It's really nice. Yeah, you see it's called a chew. And mostly you eat really hot, so your fingertips Yes, they, and they, they put a lot burn. of they put a lot of pepper inside that hot pepper. <laughs> mm. <laughs> do you have a, do you have a Cameroon Cameroon uh, restaurants in Belgium where you can go uh, and and uh, you know when you are missing yeah, yes. your we have we have a lot of them in Liège we have a lot in Brussels Antwerp there are a lot of them there a lot okay. uh, I know maybe in, in Brussels they have more than uh, there are more than twenty we don't have it right in Flanders we don't have it because we have yeah. in this uh, French part of Belgium because the Cameroons who are here they speak French so it's easier for them to integrate to Belgium society. yeah it's easy for them to because integrate the yeah and we have Cameroonian uh, provision shops that say food from Cameroon say maybe you can buy cook at home they say the raw food all those things the spices everything that you want they, they, they even say Cameroon beer if you want to drink Cameroon beer you have it here <laughs> you know, that... so they say Nearly everything, cola nuts. So they say all those things in the shop. Anything of Cameroon that you want from the shop, you can have it. Bitter leaf. So that's another one of the meals. The achu and yellow soup. 
Then you have the the Watafufu and Aero. That's the second. Then you also have another one uh, called Endole. It's bitter in the mouth, but it's, you can eat it. It's prepared from something they call the bitter leaf. So you wash the bitter leaf very well and you prepare it with um, with something they call a goosey. The aponky seed, you grind and use it to prepare it or with granites. So the coin dole is also very nice. Then you have the the okra soup and gari. Gari is something made is food fufu made out of cassava also fried cassava. They grind the cassava and fry it. Then they use it to make the fufu. Then the okra soup. I think you you know the okra. Yes. Yeah. They draw it draws like that. Eh? It's very popular me in Cameroon. You prepare it with crabs. Eh? You know it's very sweet. Yeah. <laughs> then you children, all the children like mm. that food. If you have children at home, believe me, if you taste they taste that food, they are never gonna eat container food again. It's finished. Mm. <laughs> Victor, all the children like Rod that food. Rodrigo here. Uh here in Brazil, we have two kinds of cassava in yeah. two na common names here. With one we so we call uh, sweet cassava, and the other uh, is more toxic. Need to to, to work on uh, it. Yeah, what yeah. other kinds of process? To, yeah, you know, to you know when the cassava stay too long in the soil, they become poisonous, mm -hmm. toxic. I didn't know that. Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, two, two years, different. you have to have cassava. Yeah. Two years, after two years, it's become toxic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, so here in Brazil, he Brazil uh, is based of uh, uh, food of probably more north and northeast. And there are a lot of different food from, from cassava, different Prepare different. Yeah, use. the same way we Is have that, a lot of different food from cassava. They make yeah. different things. Uh, here in Brazil, uh, the, uh, there are uh, plate that use the leaves. Do you know the, the if there are a plate that use the leaves of cassava too? In uh, in yeah, Cameroon, yeah, 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 the leaves of cassava. Yeah, some tribes in Cameroon also do that. Uh, you can make the leaves and it will rise, it will anything. Yeah. And to prepare this, we need more, I think, more than one leaf. Uh, boil it, this, this leaves. I to, know it. To... I know. I've eaten ah, it. Okay. In Sierra Leone, it's also very popular. There are a lot of African countries, they eat that cassava leaf. Yeah. It's very, even here, they stay in the shop. You can go here and get the cassava leaf that has already been washed and, and packed it. Then you can go and make with your meat and the, the rest. Uh, but well, I know that there's a lot of rice and beans in Nigeria, in, in Brazil, like in Cameroon. You will also eat rice and beans, right? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are but different. In, yeah, in Cameroon, we eat rice and beans also. It's very popular uh, with yeah. us, rice and beans. Then there's a popular uh, dish in the morning in Cameroon, like breakfast, they call uh, uh, popoff and beans. They make the pop of the round round thing that you fry. Then people eat with beans in the morning. It's very popular. Yeah. So when you go to Cameroon, they are called, they call those area a chombo, a chombo shop, a chombo bars. In the morning, you can jump inside, eat pop of and beans, pop of and beans everywhere, and then you go to work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do they use cassava? Brazil, in, I was gonna ask, do they use cassava or um, what do we call it? Uh, what is cassava in, in Portuguese? Oh, mandioca. Mandioca. Yeah, do we use mandioca? Do they I use cassava in uh, Belgium? Do they have it like in restaurants or do they sell it in the market for you to buy? Uh, they sell. That, there are some specific shops that sell cassava. It was not popular before, but now they sell. Mm -hmm. But they are mostly found in Afro restaurants, in Afro uh, uh, provision shops. You have the Pakistan, the Indian shop. They also sell those. Those you can find it there easily. Turkey shop also sell them, but in Belgian shops, such as the Carrefour, uh, some shops they sell like spa. Spa you can have it, but it's not very popular. But you can find nearly every all the cassava in uh, Afro okay. shops. 
Because I'm they, in, the, in the United States, I don't remember this uh, vegetable or this root, okay, cassava or mandioca. I don't remember that with my family and, and growing up in restaurants, nowhere. Is but that like I, yuca? It's so good. Is is that like yuca? yuca I root? think it might be. Yeah. Because we do have yuca, they, but it's you, not They also common. used it. They also used it to make something in Canada called a mignondo, fermented in the tie in leaves like that. You understand? In the Congo called it chikwang. They, they use cassava, they, they, they ferment it, they, they cook it and tie in leaves. You can easily eat it. It's also found here everywhere. The cassava is used a lot of things, many, many different, different ways, in many, many different ways to make food. The, the use is never ending. Then you also yeah. have the yams, the white yams. Mm -hmm. You can boil and eat with beans. You can boil and eat with sauce, tomato sauce and meat, all those type of things. The food is just too much, just too much to be naming. <laughs> yeah, so there are a lot of varieties. What about um anything else? Um, anybody else have any questions? Ludmila, Carlos. Before be, before before we continue, before uh, let me tell you something, something very important. In Brazil, you can speak Portuguese, right? Yes. Do you know yes. the name Cameroon was given by the Portuguese? Um, yeah, Cameroon. Uh, was Cameroon talking meaning about that. because uh, there was a Portuguese sailor that came to Cameroon. So he said around the river Wuri, in the river Wuri, he found a lot of prawns. So he called it River of Prawn, the Cameroons. I think in the Portuguese it means prawn, uh, something like that. Cameroon. Yes. Yeah, Cameroon. That's, so that's the origin of the name. The Cameroon means <laughs> the River of Prawn. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, so, so that what I want to make you understand the origin of the name the Cameroon is from the prawn, which is the Portuguese meaning. Ah, uh, well, you know the guys, the difference between a uh, shrimp, which is about this big, a prawn is bigger. Prawn yeah. is bigger, much bigger actually, about two or Very three good. times the size. Yeah, Very good. yeah. it's almost as lobster. So, yeah, so he landed at this river where there are these prawns there, so he gave the name. The river of Prawn. So mm. it became the, the where where the, 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 the establishment of Cameroon began. So they mm -hmm. call the whole land now the Cameroons. Okay. <laughs> but the, the the name of the country for us is in plural, Cameroons. Yes. And the Cameroon uh. is not the present day Cameroon today. The the land has been split so many times. The Togo land, the Gabon. Central African Republic, all were under the Cameroons. Mm. But when the Second World War started, they were they separated them, they divided the, the land. Part of Nigeria was also in the Cameroon, Gabon, Central African, all of them, Benin, all of them, Togo land, they were under the Cameroon. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they started sharing them after the Berlin Conference. Mm -hmm. So it became left with the part that is today. Okay. Okay, Lujmila, Carlos, Marcella. Hi, Cameron. Nice to meet you. Hi, guys. I'm sorry for being so late today. But, um, Cameron. Um, oh, his name is Victor. I like to do. Come, come, what? Cameron sorry. is the country, but his name is Victor. <gasps> oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> I'm so sorry, Victor. No problem. I'm so sorry. But let's go, Victor. What uh, what do you like to do uh, in your free time? What are the places that you recommend uh, here? Uh, here, no, uh, there uh, in your country, in your city, the city you live. Well, he lives in Belgium in now. He lives in Belgium. I, I but, live in Belgium, but he's from now, Cameroon. But I can also recommend you the places in Cameroon, in oh, Cameroon. Okay. In Cameroon, if you visit Cameroon, it is one of it has one of the largest coasts with the Atlantic Ocean. So if you are a sea person, you'll be very but the coast the, the coastal areas are very natural, they are not yet very developed. But if you want places that are there, you have places like the Kribi, and then you have the Limbe. Then in the Limbe, there are some islands that are being developed now there that you can visit. They are all, all at the seaside. Then you can also eat natural food like crabs, uh, scampies, all the prawns. You can also find them there. Um, 
Then there are also natural resort areas within a natural park, like the Waza Park, where you have all the wild animals. You can also visit visit that. It's a protected park. Go in Cameroon, you have lions, you have hippopotamus, you have giraffes, you have snakes, all type of. Ah, things I don't like have. snakes. I don't like snakes. Yeah, yeah, not the anaconda. Don't be scared. <laughs> <laughs> Just eat them. <laughs> don't be scared. So you have a natural path. Then in every province, you have natural resources that have been created to make it look natural and very beautiful. Uh, like you have the Mawa Park. It is located in the northwest province. Then you have some in the west province. Then you have a lot of the I don't I can't give you all the names, but you have them all dotted. That if you want to go look for natural parks, you can go there. There is really created in a traditional form, where you have wildlife, you have bees. It's like a whole park. You can go there and have that beauty of the countryside. You know, so they, they are really good. Then they have a lot of good luxury hotels. Uh, they have a lot of good luxury hotels. They have um. Yes, you, everything that you can find touristic. But what you have to be careful with that Cameroon don't have very good roads. Their roads are very bumpy. You know, <laughs> having a dictatorship government. Yes, having a dictatorship government for 60 years or 40 years in power, you can't expect much from them. <laughs> but to enjoy, Cameroon is a place that they never sleep there. Eh? I think that they're the highest drinkers in the whole of Africa. Somewhere I like beer, you can drink yourself to death. Mm. They don't care. There are bars, there are big nightclubs. It's the highest place where you have nightclubs. Nightclubs is every step that you take. You have nightclubs, you have bars, you have good restaurants of all levels. You can eat anything you want. Definitely the best food, you will have it. Good restaurant, good bars, good amusement park, good cafes. That one, you are very sure to have it to the maximum. Then you have a lot of natural fruit and food. Their food is bio. Is what? Bio means it's natural. Mm. Not with fertilizer. Okay. All it's those like things. a more healthy food, natural more food, healthy. Healthy food. You have You have mangoes, all the fruit you can think. Mangoes, bananas, oh, they are just everywhere. That this almost nice. the season you can find it everywhere. You can eat mangoes, oranges, everything, and the groundnuts, fresh one. Really, if a natural food, you are good to go. You have everything that you you want. Really, plantain, yams, cassava, every, and they are not very expensive. You have pears, big size, small size, everything you have. So it's a nice place to go and exploit if you like nature. You will not you you cannot miss it. Very good, very good, Victor. Thank you so much. Yes, and Cameroon have different different climates. Eh, it's not the same climate. In one area, it's very cold, hot, and very hot. So you can have anything you want to have. You go then there are areas in Cameroon that is raining throughout the year. Rain never stops. The called Dibuncha is the second most rainiest place in the world. After uh, this area in uh, in India, I think the rainiest place is in India. Then followed by Dibuncha, the rain never stops there. So and they have this very huge big forest. So I think they also have the tropical forest also like Brazil because you know Cameroon and Brazil are in the equator. They fall inside the equatorial the same equatorial zone. If you look Brazil, the equatorial line is zero degrees. It passes from Brazil right to up to Cameroon. Mm -hmm. So they fall under the same uh, equatorial region mm -hmm. and they have almost the same climate. So Cameroon in the north is very hot because it's more of desert in the north. So the sun there is very wild, very wild. <laughs> then if you come to the central, the sun is not wild, but the temperatures are always high. So you always need to be in the like, air condition. But there are seasons that the temperature goes down, but the temperature is always very high. You're always above 30 degrees. Mm -hmm. 30, 26, 30 degrees, you have to always be around that area. So most houses have, um, either you have a fan or you have an air condition. And then most cars, they are driven in air condition. Then if you go to Yaoundé, which is the capital city, 
most houses don't have air condition. The place is just cool. It's never too hot. It's never too cold. It's about 20 degrees, 24, and going down. So you don't actually need an air condition, and you don't need too much. Although during the day, it's a little bit hot, but in the night, it's just calm. Then if you go to Bamenda, which is the northwest part of the country, uh, during the day, the temperature can rise. They have very good sunshine. But the difference there is that when, no matter how much the sun is out, the inside of the house remains always cool, very mm -hmm. cool inside. And in the night, the temperature drops drastically that you need blankets to cover before you can sleep. In the morning, it's very cool. Then from 10 o'clock in the morning, the temperature started rising. By 4 p.m. or 3 p.m., the, the, the temperature is at maximum. By 5, it starts to drop again. Then the cycle continues. Then you have another area like Indu, almost toward the border with Nigeria. In the morning, it can go up to minus uh, 5 degrees. Very cold. Then by 8 o'clock, the temperature starts to rise. And by midday, it's very hot. And by 5, it starts to drop. So every area of Cameroon has its own unique tem uh, climate. Wow, it sounds like your country, Cameroon, is similar to Brazil, but it's condensed. It's a smaller yes. country, but it it's has the smaller, variety yeah. of, of temperatures like we have in Brazil. Yeah, because we fall under the same equator, so the changes are almost the same. Mm -hmm. So the winds are changing very rapidly. <laughs> okay, Lujmila, I haven't heard a question from you yet. Well, my question was going to be about um, interesting places to visit, just like uh, Marcela. So, okay. okay. Yeah, but it's interesting because I live in Belém, the north of Brazil, and here it's kind of similar about the weather. Mm -hmm. The weather. Temperature. It's similar here. And we yes. also do, do have, uh, we have uh, Amazon uh, rainforest, right? Yeah, Amazon. And we have the cassava here too. Especially here in Belém, we have a dish called, uh, oh my gosh, what is the name of the dish? Is manisoba, manisoba, and it's made with the leaves of cassava, mm. and it's really, really delicious. So I would be at home if I go to Cameroon <laughs> one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> yes, because even one day I was listening to an interview from Ronaldo. He said his best food was rice and beans. I said, hey, there's also rice and beans in Brazil. Yes. <laughs> yes, very delicious food. Mm -hmm. So your food, your food, uh, your, the base of uh, of your food kind of it's uh, rice and beans as well, because here in Brazil, it's like, it's the base, uh, you know, some families, they yeah, eat that the every, every day. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, for us, it's every tribe has its own type of food that they mm -hmm. eat every day. Oh, my goodness. Every tribe, every village, not tribe, it's small, small, they have their own food that they eat every day. That whatever thing you give to them, that if they are not eating that food, they have not eaten. <laughs> <laughs> but then you say, I have eaten. They have eaten that particular food. Uh -huh. For me, you can come to my village, you bring rice in big boxes and give everybody. You ask them, have you eaten? You say, I have not eaten anything since morning because they are not eating that food. food. Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, the moment the they eat food, ah, they said I've eaten, said I've eaten, everything is confirmed. <laughs> so yes. it's it's funny, but if we if we look at all the food sources, they are almost the same type of thing that have been done in different ways. Mm -hmm. Different spices. Cassava prepared in another way, kukoyam in another way, mm -hmm. rice in another way. Uh, they use even granite to make a granite sauce. They make vegetable sauce, they make tomato sauce, they make uh, the okra sauce because it's very also popular. It's something that me and even here I like to eat, especially when you eat. There's some Nigerian way of preparing that we have also imported to, to price. It's very nice. You eat it all oh, along. So every tribe has its own unique mm -hmm. food. Some people like to eat corn, fresh corn made with beans, with oil. It was also nice. Mm -hmm. And there's some tribes that eat fish. That the main source is fish, and uh, some some cassava food made out something made out of cassava in long like that. You prepare so you eat with the fish, or you eat the fish and plantain. Very good. You roasted fish, eh? Mm -hmm. So guys, that's listen. We need to we need to stop for today because Victor needs to go home. 
<laughs> yes. I will go home, but it's okay. I also have to rest. It helped me to rest. So I was yeah. halfway my journey. So thank you for spending time with us today, Victor. And thank you all for Hello, participating yeah, today. Really had a good time learning some things about that part of Africa. It's really cool. It's the uh, it's this and, it's uh, a country for, of, of for shrimp. Everybody, for everybody who wants to travel to Belgium, I'm a truck driver. If you have a license in trucking, you're never gonna suffer. You will never lack a job and you are sure to make your life better. So if you have a license in trucking, you come to Belgium as a new starter, you are gonna go faster because here, when you are a truck driver, they don't care whether you speak the language or you don't speak, or they, you can speak English. For them, it's okay. They need truck drivers. There are no drivers. They want you on the steering and they want you to keep going. And you can make a good, you can make a good salary. That's between... good to know. That's good yes, to know. Yes. Yeah, yes. Perhaps. <laughs> uh, I work 10 hours a day. I make a salary of about 3,000 to 35. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Then if you are somebody that you have a big family that is still like you have a wife and three or four children, you are making about 4,000 euros, which is very, it's almost double the salary of people who do normal jobs around. Well, so four times five, that's truck, about, uh, that's about 20, you have a license, 20,000. Yeah, that's a lot. You of have money. a license, you're never going to stay home because you don't have a job. Mm -hmm. you, even at old age, you can still do, it's not difficult. So something very good for you to take with you are long. Very good. Thank you, Victor, so much. It was really enjoyable to Thank have you. this conversation. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll meet again Bye, next guys. time. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Let me keep, keep on. <laughs>